Neptune. Neptune going direct. Happens soon. You're already feeling it, though, because Neptune sits at the same degree and minute for about seven days. Doesn't move. Seven days doesn't move. December 6, 2023 is when it, when the red numbers turn black. So we call that direct. All right. So we got Neptune direct December 6th and we're going to go find it on the chart and we're going to take a walk to Neptune. Let's get it big. There we go. Big, big. There it is. It's got the blue arrow on it. Neptune 2453. So here's the thing about the 2453. Uh, this is on the 6th of December. So you think of Neptune, right? And it's Neptune in Pisces. So this is a strong Neptune. Sleep, dream, fantasy, almost too good to be true. Neptune standing still. Because it was at 2453 for seven days, literally those minutes did not change. 53 minutes. The degree stayed the same, but so did the minutes. So standing still, all the Neptune keywords, we feel them. Sleep and dreams. I know from my mom, uh, I noticed it like the last day of November going into the first day of December. So if you were to think back, there might've been a there were some other things going on with Mercury and Saggy. And so that, mean, that meant like in the last three days of, of, of November, when your mind is active, it tends to keep you awake, right? Well, guess what? The mind slowed down December 1st because Mercury entered Capricorn. Yeah, Mercury entered Capricorn. So your mind slows down. And when your mind slows down, you're able to chill a little bit, right? You're able to chill. The mind's not waking you up. The mind's not not uh, preventing you from going to sleep. It's like you lay down and you go right to sleep. So the mind slowed down. The talking, the communication, and the thinking slowed down because it's cappy. And that's what Capricorn does. It's cautious. It's slow. It said, look, okay, let's think this through. Let's take our time. And then Neptune was already not moving. So sleep, dream, fantasy, movies, sound. How many of you have been experimenting? Like maybe listening to different sounds, listening, using different things, whether it's for sleeping or meditation, or things to just kind of give you that chill kind of vibe where you just want to escape. Now, now with the escape word, we also have to talk about substances because that is also Pisces substances. So whether it's wine or whatever it is that is your your poison, whatever you choose, right? Neptune energy is, I need to escape. So I need to drink something, eat something, smoke something, use something. Calgon, take me away, right? I might meditate or I might take that long, hot bath. Neptune gives you the ability to be in that other realm, which means I'm not here in the material and the physical, I'm going somewhere else. Even if it means I'm only doing it with my mind. But if we are physically moving or traveling, right? Neptune is across the pond. We literally, it's, a, it's far away. It's far away from where we consider home. Foreigners, foreign lands, foreign countries, across the ocean. That would be Neptune and Pisces energy. Okay. So this Neptune really pronounced and really strong. And we would also be hearing about people who are public figures because that's Neptune. And I say public figures because that will include a lot of people. Anybody who's just a known public figure, people who can be currently alive. Maybe some people have died. Uh, this can be people where they're coming up in the news again. So this can be people that we know about because of their performances, whether it's artistic, sound, as in musicians, theater, art of any kind. We think of Pisces, it's costumes. 
Uh, we also think of like poetry and screenplays, and we think of Hollywood. We think of sci-fi, make-believe, writers, storytellers, right? So Pisces energy and public figures tends to also be someone who's a really good actor, performer of some sort. And so their sound, their words, if they're not using music, their sound can even have a, a softness to it, a softness to it. So, we and, and relaxing, it right? helps us to escape Pisces energy. And it emphasizes understanding and unity. So that becomes a little stronger as well. There might be something where you're understanding some of the behind the scenes connections like that you maybe weren't aware of before. Some people have been commenting and messaging me and, and like these aha moments they're having. They're understanding about certain things or people or events globally or in their own world, right? In their own private life. And that's Pisces because it's the 12th sign of the Zodiac. So that means that all the knowledge of the previous signs is contained within the Pisces sign, because it's all of them. You had to go through all of them to get to this one, you see? So somehow Pisces contains Aries and Gemini and Cancer and, and Leo energy and Virgo. Did I skip Taurus? Yeah, I think I did. Isn't that funny? Um, so yeah, it, you know, I could go on and on, but you go through all the signs and it, and it's all there some piece of it, some part of it, whether it's adding confusion, that's the other thing, another Pisces keyword that I didn't mention, but I've had a lot of folks reaching out in the last 24 hours about confusion. I'm recording this, yeah, first day of December. Lots of folks, um, last day of November, first day of December, reaching out, things seeming just really confusing. And, and vague and blurry and all of a sudden the clarity and the details and, and the next step, it's like, okay, there's like a fog. I can't see through the murkiness. And that's Pisces. Its power becomes a little bit more pronounced. And so for some of us, the sleep factor, I want to sleep longer or I go right to sleep or I'm just in the middle of the day and suddenly I'm feeling like, okay, like all of a sudden I could just crash. I can just go to sleep sitting right here. Not a problem, right? That's all Pisces. Yeah. So let's see what some other interesting things on this day. This is December 6th. And you see that I have, uh, yeah, I've got some things marked off here. I've got vertex, which is fate. It's at 15 degrees. And that's a very fast object. It's not slow. It's really quick moving. But I think it's significant because I have this Neptune going direct down to the hour that it goes direct. And look, this vertex is conjunct Nessus at 15 degrees on this day at this hour. What is the hour? I know who, who, who looks at the hour when a planet goes direct? My crazy ass. 7.57 a.m. So 8 a.m. and that's central standard time because that's where I live. That's my time zone. All right. So 8 a.m. central standard time. And that's uh, an event of some sort, possibly. And it's a faded event. And it's connected to Nessus. And Nessus tends to kind of be, kind of be this revenge sort of energy. Anytime I've read up on the Nessus, I haven't really seen anything very positive about it, which is unfortunate. But if it's in Pisces, it can be this behind the scenes kind of stuff. Because it's Pisces, it's the hidden, it's what we can't see with our eyes. It's almost like this intuitiveness, this knowing, this understanding, but yet I can't like pick it up and show it to you, but I could be like, well, I just know that's true. Like the intuition. So it's, it's just like that feeling of there's something behind the scenes, like there's this force and it could be misleading. It could be even deceptions because Pisces isn't necessarily purposely trying to be manipulative and deceiving, but yet it can be because it can be the actor. It can be the, the, the speaker and the preacher. And think about that, the speaker, the preacher, the actor, the storyteller. What are they doing? 
when you're watching a movie, what are they doing? They are literally transporting you to like another dimension in a sense in your brain. It takes you out of where you currently are at and it makes you feel where you, something different. It makes you feel a different reality. It makes you like a new reality. It takes you, remember, escape. So you go to somewhere else and that, the more details that other place feels, the more sound, the more color, the more details that are in that other location, that other realm, that other place in your brain becomes more lively, becomes more alive and almost seems to be reality. So many times Pisces energy can mix up things for that reason. Again, not to necessarily be intentional, although they're, you know, this is the sign of many politicians as is Leo energy. So I just wanted to be clear on that, where people definitely use the power of persuasion actors. They're, they're using the same energy, but in different ways. What's the difference? You got somebody standing in front of you, a salesperson saying, hey, you need this car. You're going to look good in this car. Could you imagine driving down the street in this car, right? Could you imagine how many heads will turn? Like that's somebody using the power of persuasion. Actors do the same thing so that actors, actresses do the same thing. They're putting on a performance to sway you, to make it seem more believable. And, and, and whether it's by their sound, by the words that they use, the way they use those words, the cadence in their words, right? They use do it in a way where it could even be kind of rhyming because that's poetry with, with, with Pisces energy. So yeah, rapping. Um, but it has a sweet sound to it very sweet sounding. And it's even more than sweet because Venus is sweet. Neptune is syrupy, syrupy sweet. There's a difference, right? Yeah. It's an abundantly sweetness that's, that's thick and smooth and just kind of, you know, you think of a stack of pancakes, a flapjacks with the, with the maple syrup dripping down, right? And that, that sweet butter dollop on the top. And so it's, it's, that's Neptune. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, you look at it and you kind of just like, whoa, look at that. I, I want, Ooh, I want that, you know, and by someone describing it to you, by someone using their words and, and infusing it with their feelings even, right. To really be, um, like color, but yet again, persuasive, the power of persuasion to almost to almost change some of their literally some of their features in a sense and if it's not physically those features which if you pay attention you see some people do that not that they're like oh I'm going to change my eyes I'm going to change my nose no it's just that while they're talking you can see things in their face move you can see the structure of their face and it's like wow, they're really believing this shit that they're shoveling. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you see it on their face even, right? And that's what I'm talking about. So it's it's using that to make it more something more believable. So we think of stories and books, novels and fantasy, right? Make believe. And well, it's selling an idea. At the end of the day, it's selling an ideal Neptune very idealistic energy, selling an ideal. Okay. So Nessa tends to be something or someone that kind of represents this behind the scenes thing where at this particular moment, fate has a hand in it. And the Nessa thing kind of has like this revenge side of kind of vibe to it. So it's, it can be kind of a monkey wrench thrown into things. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, um, if you look at the chart, if I back it up a little bit, we see that here on this chart, if I pull it down, the sun, the sun on this day, look at that, is at 14 degrees. So I think that's significant. The sun being at 14 degrees is, is, is super powerful because it represents a person that's in charge. It's an authority figure. That's the sun, an authority figure. And at 14 degrees, 
you know, that 14 degrees is being squared. That's a square to what we just talked about, right? Nessa and the vertex point right there. You see that? That's close enough. 14 to 15, they're right there. So I think this may be a thing for somebody. There might be an event, a conversation, a communication. Likely business and government is involved because the news, if you hear something, Mercury's in in Capricorn. So job, some people have been sending me messages that they were made redundant. And I think, I'm not really sure, but these are people overseas and um, in their language, redundant, like to me, redundant means like this repetition type of thing. So I don't know if that means they were laid off or for, yeah, I don't know what the hell it means exactly, but I assume that's what it means. I just discovered I was made redundant. So if you're listening, because it was more than one person that told me this, uh, I don't know where they're from, but they, that was the way they phrased it. Um, and Capricorn is work. It's work, it's responsibilities, it's my long-term goals and ambitions. Um, that's what Mercury's talking about because that's the news. But what do you see at 15? Yes, I'm not making this up. What do you see at 15 in Capricorn? You see Vega. A fixed star doesn't really move. However, it is red, so it's retrograding. So the keywords for Vega are really pronounced. And they've Vega's been retrograding for a while. It's not one of those that goes yo-yo-like back and forth real quick. It's slow. And Vega's keywords are very similar to Venus's keywords. So for Vega, we're just going to put a big old V there. To me, that's Vega, a V with a nice little, um, like a little moon thing hanging off there on the end because that represents the feminine energy, because that's Venus feminine. I'm not sure what's going on. So let me try to get rid of some of these. Anyway, we'll leave that like that. Vega is kind of like Venus. All right. And I think Vega matters because again, it's at the 15 degree mark. And this 15 degree mark is a very nice sextile. You see that? It's a very supportive sextile to Nessa and Vertex. Nessa and Vertex. It's a supportive sextile from Vega. And the Venus energy coming from Vega, there is a need to establish harmony because that's Vega. That's what Vega wants to do. And if it's retrograding, it's going to be pronounced and obvious. So kind of like diploma, diplomatic relations comes, comes to mind here. Uh, detail and balance is very strong when we talk about Vega, and it is considered to be a very fortunate star, right? It's artistic. It is artistic and a kindly nature. An eye for detail, an eye for detail and balance. And there is a caution for self-indulgence. And the, 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 the recommendation is keep an even approach. So balance, keep an even approach. It being retrograde, uh, and it stays retrograde, but this will change. Um, I've already kind of done some other videos for 2024, and Vega is going to switch things up a little bit. So this this flair for diplomacy within government and businesses and long-term career and boss energy, like this is the manager at my boss. This is the owner of the company. This is the CEO. Like that's, that's Capricorn by itself. Obviously Pluto in Capricorn is like the big boss, you know, super powerful and wealthy energy. That's Pluto in Capricorn, big businesses, right? Businesses and, and, people with a buttload of money having, uh, you know, some say with the government. That's Pluto in Capricorn. So wealth, extreme wealth. Let's just say you're not in government at all, but extreme wealth is pronounced here because it's Pluto at 2838. And you all know that's that 2838 degree I've been talking about, 2838 with Sedna. Not a coincidence right? So we're already in that cycle by this time where that aspect is happening. Uh, let's talk about the sun one more time because that sun is squaring the, the vertex point and being the sun, it's a person 
who's an authority figure, a person who's in charge. And because it's in SAGI, we think of the judicial branch of the government. We literally think of the justices. We think of uh, the judiciary in general, right? When you think of how all that works and all the, all the nuts and bolts and all the systems that are involved and the people that are involved and the branches of, of what it entails within the government, yeah. It's judgments, it's rulings, okay? It's can, you know, on a small scale, you know, unconscious judgments in your own life. Saji likes to travel and it's about truth, freedom. How can I feel free? I'm searching and seeking wisdom. It is religion and spirituality and philosophy on life and somebody who is a figure, an authority figure, because that's the sun, okay? Now, there's an opposition I have drawn in over here, and that opposition is to the vertex point. So, yes, Neptune is a big deal because it's standing still, going direct, and it's been standing still. But what this tells us is on this particular day with the vertex point and this big T-square, a strong T-square, you see that? It's a strong T-square. There's multiple things here. And matter of fact, even on the day before, I've got, if you look closely here, the day before the moon, the moon would have been exactly 17 degrees in Virgo the day before. So that would have been December 5th. And so here we are, December 6th, and we see the moon is now at 28, a critical degree in Virgo. We think healthcare, we think day-to-day -day routines, we think gardening, we think the earth, we think details for sure. But domestic part of life, domestic help even, right? We think cleanliness and hygiene. And this assistance for people who are in need of the, of the necessities of food because it's digestion, it's Virgo. So food and a, it's a holistic approach. We're sticking to the basics. We're sticking to the necessities. We need clean water. We need clean food. We need clean, we need clean clothes. Like that's all Virgo stuff. It's all about hygiene. It's also pets, domestic pets. But look, Juno's not a super fast mover. It's sitting here at 17 degrees. The day before, the 15th, the sun was on top of Juno. And again, it would have been in a tight square opposition, I'm so sorry, <laughs> it's freaking Neptune, would have been in a tight opposition to Nessa for sure. And the vertex for that matter, vertex would have been back here uh, roughly 24 hours at the same point because that's how vertex travels. It would have been maybe at 14 degrees 24 hours earlier because it moves that quickly that fast, but it typically moves back within a 24 hour period, it's back in the same sign again. So if you know the time of the day that the vertex was here, which we do, we just looked at it, then we know that 24 hours before, we know that 24 hours before at roughly around the same time, it was roughly around the same degree. It might've been off a few degrees, but definitely within the same sign. Interesting, right? Yeah totally interesting because that means that on the fourth, well, we had a strong T-square, a strong T-square, including the moon and Juno and the sun, because a two degree orb is plenty. Two degree orb is plenty for that sun to have been squaring. That sun would have been at 13 degrees the day before, right? And uh, yeah, I think Mercury talking about jobs, maybe jobs report. I don't know. You know, I'm not an economist and all that, but people hearing things about their jobs, people hearing things about the rules and the regulations, because remember, long-term goals. Now, what I will add here is this Mercury is, is you see, it's, it's in the dark colors, right? And it's very slow here. And we know, because we've watched the Mercury retrograde video, right? That as Mercury slows down, it's, you know, it does the slow down dance, I should say, be right as it approaches that eight degree mark. So because it is approaching its retrograde point, which will be 
right here at eight degrees, we know that whatever kind of news we're hearing about right now, this Mercury has to go and get more of the information. So if you got some news about something that was going on with your job, it might seriously be a temporary thing because this Mercury, we don't have all the facts. This Mercury has to get to here, then it has to go all the way back to 22, and then it has to go all the way forward again. This won't be until January. You follow? So there might be some different information at that time for you in your life personally. And on the global scale, on the big scale, you know, whether it's politicians, you know, people in the government, uh, just known public figures, people of wealth, whatever, right? Uh, we know that things are constantly changing and evolving. And um, yeah, this was to just give you the highlight of the major factors involved here. So this is a immutable T-square. It involves Virgo, it involves Pisces, and it involves Sagittarius energy. So it's communications, it's talking, it's the day-to-day -day routines, my job, my projects, my health, right? And it's beliefs, it's freedom, and it includes fantasy and sci-fi and strong Neptune energy. So things might seem a little fuzzy or even a bit unbelievable at times, right? So we're just kind of trying to keep ourselves relaxed and calm and understanding that all these things are going to move. Mercury doesn't have all the information yet. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, for those of you that are still here, remember, I appreciate your time. You got any questions, comment below, and I will help you out in any way I can. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.